Let's play around with this building and hide everything else. This is probably our, you know, municipal building, etc. So let's take a look at just the geometry. Let's modify that. Let's make a bunch of windows. Maybe here. And height segments. Yeah, it should be fine, right? Maybe more like that for the windows. Something. And maybe length segments two windows. We could do three, but I think two is fine. All right, for now, that's good. Now let's modify this box and go to Edit Poly. The polygons have points, which you can see here. All right. It has edges, the edge of the polygon. And it has the polygon itself or the whole segment that have been connected. So let's click on one and delete it. Look, we have a window. All right. Let's go every other one. This is very simple modeling. All right, so far so good. So we're gonna select the edges after we model, or maybe a loop, which is all the edges that are closed in one segment. And maybe hold down the control key to hold other ones down. You can hold the shift key down and it automatically extrudes these so you can build the depth of a window in a building. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of these edges that have been looped. Now at first, if I rendered this just the way it is, it would look kind of funky because it's paper thin two dimensional. Now I could hold the shift key down and extrude by hand or right here you can see the word extrude and a little box with settings. You open up those settings and you can extrude a certain amount and it'll show you how much now why would I do this let's say minus something random mi minus 1.6 it's stored now in this so we can do that later on save it it's now been extruded let's take a look by display on hiding all and seeing how that renders and then maybe moving over this way so we can take a look in there and see what it does So far, so cool. I'm going to change the light so we can actually get in there and take a look. So let's look at the top view. And let's move our light a little bit like this. So we can kind of peek in there and take a look at the, uh, the light that's happening into those holes in the windows. Looks pretty good so far, right? still have the pillars creating the shadows, the other buildings, some reflections on the plasticky cement we made, and we're really getting in there to see a dimensional window into this municipal building. So let's close this up and let's look at just this again. Display, hide unselected, go to perspective, hold your alt key down, and then middle mouse wheel to the other side. Count for me one and one in okay so on this side let's go back here to box let's go back here to edit poly let's go back here to edit poly and select one and one in i'll show you what's happening so far and delete see we can see through now so let's do the rest of the windows. And delete those. And let's select here. And we can do it by vertex, which is neat. See, watch that. Isn't that cool? And hold the control key down for the next one. And then take by vertex off so we can take the edge here. 
and zoom in a little tiny bit while we're working. You may accidentally get the other edges in three dimensions, so maybe tilt down. So it's less likely you're going to hit those in three dimensions on the other side you've already created. Now, if you remember, I said 1.6. That was just random, but it works in this quick building I, I did. So let's do that. Let's go to extrude, the little box, and look at that, minus 1.6 in from the shape it is, from the outside dimension, not minus 1.6y, just in from the normal or the outside pointing part of the polygon itself. Now let's look in the, uh, let's try that again. Minus 1.6, control Z. Say okay, check mark. And let's look, look what we got now. Let's render that just by itself. That's pretty cool. Can't see the other side because it's dark. If we had another uh, light to this system, we could. Let's escape. So far, so far that's great. Now let's look at the top. Just take a look. I'm going to wireframe view. See that? Those are the lines itself in 3D that we built. The indentations. All right. So if we looked at the top, and then to save time, we just built another box in wireframe. Yep. All good. And then we made sure uh, wireframe. We don't override. And we just go to regular wireframe. There we are. So if you go here, I don't like this shade selected faces F2. So we'll take that off. All right. Let's just create something that's sort of as close for now. That goes all the way across and it's pretty tall. Now, what's this going to be? I'll show you. It wasn't quite the right size. Let's modify it. One length by one height by one height segment for the polygons. And let's just stretch it out a little bit and move it over for now. Just real quick and dirty. Make sure it's inside both parts of what we built. You look at it up and down. Now, what if we put windows as a texture? So cool. And here. Let's see. Where is that at? Where's our window texture? There it is right there. So we'll just call this building. Windows. Now let's apply that to that object we just built. And you'll see here in this view what we just did. It's not perfect because part of that texture has those lines. So maybe what we'll just do is this. We will just make a brand new material that is standard by going back as we did before. Standard, scan line, and we'll just make like a ray trace material or something. And we'll go to diffuse, light blue, and then when it comes to reflection, we'll put it up a little bit. And then ray tracer controls, extended, all this stuff is fine. That's not a problem. All right, so let's apply that to those windows. And we'll take a look. There you go. Look at that. Now if we render here, old school, you won't see anything. Now if we render here, camera view. Remember, those are Arnold lights. We won't see anything. So what we do is we go back to Arnold. It's going to complain. It doesn't like ray trace materials. But we now have a reflection. And we can actually see those windows. Now, if we escape, and if you remember, we unhide, I mean, we unhide all so we see the rest of the building. Back here, let's take a look at what just happened. Also, let's render this real quick for fun. Now we have windows inside of a building. Real geometry. Now what if you close this out? This is fun. Here's the building. Let's maximize. Close this. Go to display, hide unselected. 
Let's make a copy on top of this, right? And then we're gonna go back here and take the edit poly off as trash. So it's just what we built before. Length segments one, height, uh, eh, maybe we can keep two for this or more. Maybe I could do four. Now watch this. With segments, we still have 17. Height segments, we only have one. But let's change the height to one unit. And now we have a reference. If we move this down to the front view, that we can match to the windows. So let's go up. Look at that. Now what happens if we keep that right about there and uh, maybe the height should be like 0.5. It's a little crazy at one. Move it up. Let's take a look in 3D. All right, perfect. Now let's scale it in 3D. Scale it in 3D. Now remember, not the edges, but the whole center of it. Just the tiniest bit. A little bit. Problem is, we want a little bit more in one way than the other. So, maybe we can just type in those numbers. Let's do this. Length, or in this view, width, tiny little bit. And then the left view, let me expand that a little tiny bit. The, uh, the length, there. Just a tiny little bit each way. What do we got? Perspective, let's take a look. Now we have kind of like a sill for the whole thing. All right, cool. Now, if we go up one, hold the shift, shift key down, now if we hold the shift key down and go up, just on the y-axis, we have a copy. Move it to, there we go. Let's take that three-dimensional lock off and hold the shift key down, make a copy. And then go here, we have the same thing on both parts. Now if we hold this and hold control key down, we have two unique things. Let's call one top window bottom and another one window top go on the camera view control key and we can move them up as copies or in this case instances and make two of them because we have two floors that wasn't quite perfect because I did it by eye but it's close Let's move up just a tiny bit. There. Same thing with these. Highlight those in that view. And move them up. Camera view. What have we got now? Let's take a render by display on night all. And let's apply to just these. The texture material the bricks. Let's apply the brick material. There it is. Brick texture standard. That's fine. Yep, that's fine. There. Now we apply it to what we selected. Now it's there. And it's all streaky and everything because it doesn't have a three-dimensional mapping. Now this is neat. Let's just take the bottom which is replicated as an instance up here, and go over here. If you go to modify UVW map, it's that big, tall map we built. Let's copy that by right-clicking and copying. Now let's go to any of these, like say the bottom one, perspective, right? And let's go to right-click on the box and paste instanced, which will always change when this does. Notice that the material doesn't copy in between the instances but this modifier list does so let's take the top right click and paste the same thing paste instanced now it has the same pattern and repetition that it has over here and yet the materials can be anything over here and we happen to make it the same let's go back to camera view and take a look at that rendered to see if that looks the way we want it to like maybe right here and maybe up just a little bit higher right there. Let's take a look. 
Let's render it up. That looks pretty cool. And now we can do the same thing for the building itself and make a new texture, the same texture, it doesn't matter. So if we do that, we just do that. Again, take this and paste the instance. No polygon selected. Right click, paste instanced. Now it has the actual UVW mapping. Now we can actually go into this that we have and go up and find that texture material. We can go and find that material and we can put it on. Let's take a look. That looks pretty cool. Now let's render that. Now what you're seeing in texturing is wiring. That's the way a texture repeats but doesn't quite fit a pixel. So you'll start to see that type of a pattern. You can work on that, you can change the MIP mapping, all these other things, but for right now, that's fine. Also has to do a little bit with the shadowing that the Arnold renderer does, but you can figure it out as it goes further and further. So I think that looks pretty good. We make a staircase, make these windows as well. Let's finish that. So watch this. Now we can select this model, go into the texture material editor. Now this is really cool. We can, if we don't remember, we can select it from the scene and it jumps right to where it is. Then we can click on another object in the scene and apply it to that. Then, of course, we can click on this and we can right click and copy the UVW map we've already built and then right click and paste it, instanced. Not only does it match the size of this, but even though the object isn't the same size, take a look. It's just the invisible same texturing size so the windows will look the same, not stretched out. So let's go in the camera view and see what that looks like rendered. So that render turned out nice. Still got the plastic, the reflex, still got the plastic and the reflections here. Got those nice shadows over here from the wall. And then uh, these windows that are created and some very simple building options. So that way it's a little bit more than just boxes. Still is, but it's a beginning. Plus windows don't recess that much unless you're maybe in a prison. Good stuff, right? All right. Another kind of neat thing you can do is uh, once you get into your camera view, make sure you're in your camera view, you can then use your arrow keys and move back and forth. And while you're moving, you can actually left mouse click and then use your left and right keys, forward keys, and then left click and move the mouse as long as you don't let go. And now you're kind of like moving around in 3D in your scene. So now it's like a, a real Spider-Man thing. Now if you move and hold the shift key down while you don't let go, it takes a while to get used to this, but you can actually change the altitude. Pretty neat, right? All right, so let's look at this from here. Just amazing. All the simple boxes, polygons, and the Arnold, Arnold renderer really makes it a lot more realistic. There's a lot of problems. You might not know the logarithmic or the exposure control and get a black view, but it's incredible. 